Have a seat. I mean, John's seat. John, switch, the switch will sit there. Uh-oh. It's off now. Turn around. Turn around. All the way around. 180. Whoa! This is cool. Space bar is your parking brake. Whoa! What game is this? This one's Snow Runner. This is the very early, like, first oh. mod, testable mod. Do I have a trail on? No, oh, I have you're a little trail. No, no, you're Bobtail. Am I? Oh, that's just a tracker. Yeah, if you use your mouse, you can look out your back window. Bobtail? It's hammered down. Can you crash this thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Dan. Can you drift it? You can't quite drift, wow. but you can off road and run. So is this freezing. out now, or is we just got a demo? Well, this is the very first demo. You wanted me to give them this feedback. You are. We literally got this ten minutes ago. Whoa! This is freaking awesome. I kind of get it now. I was like, why would anyone want to come and drive a truck after a drive a truck? But this is pretty sweet. Wow. How do we look at the truck? Can we like? Uh, push one. Thing of beauty. Wow! And it would. Th did he just get that on like after we posted the light? He works quick. This is so cool. Yeah, I'm a fan. I like how it's like dirty now too. Does it start off clean? It starts off clean, but we've been going through the mud. And all of the programs in this game are realistic for what it do. They program the torque of the horsepower, the torque of our electric motors, they program the turning radius based on the steer box, so everything that handles and how it drives can is it, exactly how it's going to do in real life. Can it take body damage? Yes. Oh my god, leaves in there? I wonder what I just did in the, in the forest. Oh, the bumper's kind of messed up. Oh and yeah. The this is cool. And it, he looks like an actual, like, kind of like a logger in there, too. He's got the beard. Do you got to pick your guy? Uh, no, you just get a guy. I like that guy to start with. Let's fence out. You can just, like, take the frustration of your day out after work. Like, oh, yeah. This truck pissed me off in the shop today. I, being stubborn, just come take it out on here. But, wow, this is better than I was expecting. So Kevin and I were working on the onboard charger as well as the actual charge port here. So we're actually just gonna connect it up right now. So we're kind of doing some weird connection ports here. Who's um, Kevin? Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm from Ontario, doing a master's in nuclear engineering with a focus on small modular reactors. So I'm just out here visiting family on Vancouver Island and uh, well, found Edison Motors through YouTube. I really liked what they're doing here. Really inspiring and motivating and so uh, I just asked them if I could come down for a few days. They said yes, and so here I am. And what are you doing today? Well, we've got all the electrical systems out, as you can see, and we're trying to kind of piece the puzzle together here. So some of the wires are already pre-crimped, and they have their connectors on, like this one right here. Others are just bare, like this over here, and we've got to get the appropriate connector on here and then get it installed and then do all our testing. What we got set up here is a test batch and what we're doing is wiring up everything in advance so then we can slap things on the truck as we go, one part at a time. I just want to make sure everything works before it goes on. It's too thick for the flange of the frame rail, so we're going to separate each one into its own individual oh, okay. holes. It'll be more protected, you'll get less interference with electrical frequencies. Yeah, it's got a double layer and a loom, but on a logging truck, something for, just something for protection. Totally. All right. So it's just a nylon guard protective wrap, uh, good for like abrasion resistance um, or like when you're using it on regular hoses and stuff. Uh, if you have a leak and stuff, it'll keep all, all the, the hydraulic and fluid from like spraying everywhere. Um, but yeah, good for UV protection, good for rubbing. Okay, so the UV protection, it's going to protect it from sun, weathering, degradation, and just protect it from rubbing and wearing. Oh, that's actually almost perfect, isn't it? Yeah, that looks good. Oh, yeah. So, so like, that's a nice cost-effective way to do it, too, instead of, like, having a hose, having to split them open or fight with a rubber hose. Because once you get into something rubber, you're going to double the weight of your line. Yeah, and I mean, that's not as easy to work with, too. Like, that's, that's super Well, and now flexible. we're not talking a clearance of this much with the hose wrapped around it. It's, you're basically the exact same clearance. You and can pull that as tight as you want onto it. That's pretty wear resistant, eh? Hey? Yeah, that's what we use on like for hydraulic hoses and everything like that. That's way better. Yeah, between nice... that, the plastic loom, 
and the double rubber on the thing that should yeah well and be... this will keep the light off of it right so perfect i like that the only thing now i'm thinking is does it still have to be orange nope there's nothing in the rules that say your high voltage lines actually have to be orange oh. i read through that rule it's like a it's a standard thing but there's no rule in the inspection well, like, manual let's say it needs to be orange if, the other option here use a rubber hose but that's going to be a lot less flexible and inch and a half three of those down the side of the frame rail plus there's extra slot you literally made them twice the size yeah that's not worth it it's already got two layers of rubber protection it's got the loom if that's is wear resistant yeah that's exactly what it's for we came here looking for something to protect all our high voltage line Instead of doing rubber holes, it's gonna be big, bulky, hard to run. This gives you the same level of protection, a little bit thinner, run through. That's what they're used on forestry equipment. That's what we'll use on our truck. Good. Even better. This is why you talk to the experts. <laughs> <laughs> now all electrical line is gonna be super protected because I'm really tired of seeing EV trucks with no protection on their high voltage line. This is what they use for logging. This is exactly what our logging truck's gonna do. That way this line's gonna last a hell of a lot longer on a truck. Honestly, in my mind, protecting your high voltage line is absolutely worth $2 a foot. If you think about it, this line here is about $10 a foot for your high voltage line. You will double or triple the lifespan of that high voltage line for $2 a foot. This is exactly what I mean when I say you spend a little bit more at the start and you save a lot more in the long run. Say something. No planned obsolescence. You don't see any other of these electric vehicle companies, electric truck manufacturers running their lines with that kind of protection. That is absolutely worth it with the amount that you charge for these EV vehicles. All right, Matt Flowdrolic here, and we have our special CAN bus cabling. So normal vehicles, you'll just see the du dual wrap wires for the CAN bus. Because of the high voltage lines, you can get electrical interference. So this is one of those parts where we have the insulated CAN bus cabling. This shield is gonna isolate it, uh, make sure that we absolutely get no electrical interference, and that's what we're running on the truck. This right here is Belden 1334A Data Bliss R, 31.25 KB per second, kilobytes per second. Um, E34972 braided insulated UL certified, and bus, man, that is way too many numbers. It's it's fancy stuff. Chase usually knows that off by heart, but I know it all by heart. Yeah, I could read those numbers normally. I'm just drawing, <laughs> drawing a blank. <laughs> It'll actually, if you think about it, this does everything that you need to really know about for those drive motors, Good. or the computer control motors, or the Danfoss, or whatever. I don't know actually where we're sticking this. <laughs> so this is where we need Eric. This is Eric. This is Eric was in charge of this part of the build. Hey guys, so uh, today we're wiring up CAN bus. CAN bus stands for a control area network. And uh, what essentially this cable does, this communicates with every component that is on the truck, both to tell you like if it's operating normal and also like what values that we want. And that actually gets put up to the computer, um, which there are two of in the dash. So that actually tells you like how all the pieces of equipment are working and therefore they're working well. So I got Mark here helping me out today. Who's Mark? So he's a big fan, you know. You know, tell him about yourself. Yeah, um, my name's Mark, and I came up here from Vancouver today. Um, originally from Ireland, and uh, moved to Canada to work in uh, clean transportation, um, doing sort of technician work like this, but also engineering for uh, vehicles um, with hydrogen fuel cells globally. But uh, same sort of principle, just different generator in this case. You betcha. Uh, but yeah, yeah, really interesting project, so delighted to be involved and getting my hands dirty. How'd you find us? Uh, I saw you were gonna exhibit at the the show, and then I was actually gonna go to the show and then clicked on your YouTube, seeing you were three hours away and thought, why not? Let's go up and see. Sick. And then you volunteered yeah. to come in and help out in the, in the, in the around show. the shop. Yeah, there you go. And that show is fully charged, September 8th, 9th, and 10th. Yep. F C F I F T Y for fifty yep. percent off. Yeah, please come, guys. It's like going to be an awesome show. We're going to be there. There's tons of us. You get to meet Chase. And uh, yeah, wish us luck here. I mean, it's uh, down to the wire. What is it like? You know, three weeks left. You know, yeah. just wish us luck. Yeah. So it's like really crazy stuff they gave us. Eh? Like it's it's supposed to just be uh, typically like a yellow and a green cable. 
And it's not supposed to have sheathing like this. It's just exposed and twisted on itself like a million times. But this one, it's twisted on a million times and it's also got insulation in it because you don't want induction to happen in a wire of CAN bus. CAN bus has uh, its two signals, a high and a low, and it's just two wires that spin up and down. Um, but if you have an inductance from an electrical cable, ideally the signal both on both cables ramp up with it. But if it doesn't, your whole signal goes out of whack. And then your canvas doesn't work, and therefore it's kind of useless. So it's good that Fluidraulic gave us this. So we're getting the best of the best from them. So I really appreciate that. See, this is why I love having a partner like Fluidraulic. You need something special like this, just, hey, yeah, we got that, no problem. Just swing by there, grab it, easy. This little drain plug here actually came off the 1962 truck, the old set of frame rails. But that's why I love brass. This little fitting, probably almost 70 years old, cleaned her up with the wire wheel, we'll stick it around to the new truck. Still good to go, 70 years later. Hey everyone, it's Raymond with Edison Motors here. We just got the guys here, a bunch of subs. 12 of them. Uh, thank you everyone for supporting us at the uh, merch store there. All right guys, headed to the post office. I got mud flasks. We got the new hoodies that hit the store. Orders of that, we have t-shirts, we got decals, we got stickers, we got custom metal signs. We got a truckload here and I just put in an order for hard hat stickers. We're getting back by popular demand, the Edison Motor Fuck Tesla hard hat sticker. So you can look forward to that pretty soon here.